with the Stadtmuster of Concord. We're missing Catherine Miller, Michael Tranfaglia, and Joseph Fristashi. Um, with a quorum, we'll proceed. Um, first item of business is approval of the minutes of our June 26, 2001 meeting. Do any board members have comments on the June 26, 2001 minutes? I only have one very small one. Sandy did her usual great job. Um, on page 9, line 19, the end of the line says, um, not the steps or overhang. Instead of the word not, um, I'd like to suggest that that should read other than the steps or overhang. So that the uh, complete sentence, uh, well, I won't read the complete sentence, but toward the end, it refers to um, the modification that the bay window included in the plans will be either removed or set back so that neither the window nor any other portion of the wall or the proposed addition other than the steps or overhang protrudes into the setback of 13.97 feet from Todd Road. Any other comments or suggestions for changes? Uh, could we have a motion, please? I'd like to, uh, Sandy, I'd like to have my name spelled with one L. I'm sorry. Two N's. Everyone makes that mistake. And Ms. Miller is joining us. Me, Mommy Miller. Hi. Well, it's good to have you back. Um, could we have a motion on the minutes from someone, please? I move that we approve the minutes as modified. Uh, motion, uh, Mr. Keneally, uh, a second. Um, actually, Mr. LaPlante, since you were not here at the last meeting, you Correct. probably should not be the one to second the motion. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Chapmas. Uh, discussion on the motion, hearing none. All those in favor, actually, can we even approve the minutes? Um, Ms. Miller wasn't here, Mr. LaPlante wasn't here. That leaves us with three people able to vote. Actually, I guess we can, we have a quorum. Mm -hmm. We can still vote. All those in favor of approval of the minutes? Three in favor, uh, none opposed with two abstentions. Um, Sandy, if you would show Ms. Miller and Mr. LaPlante uh, abstaining from the vote on the approval of the minutes since they were absent at the last meeting. Next item on the agenda is old business. Uh, we have none unless anybody has any to bring up at this time. 
Uh, hearing no, no old business, uh, we have one item of new business, and that is to hear the request of Julie Sprague, 7 Odyssey Way, tax map R09, lot 7-2, to reconstruct and relocate an existing structure currently located at eight feet from the normal high water line of the Atlantic Ocean to 37 feet from the normal high water line of the Atlantic Ocean on land owned by the Sprague Corporation. And we have a representative here on behalf of Ms. Sprague. Yes, my name is Robert Cirelli. I'm an architect. My principal place of practice is Marblehead, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm here representing uh, uh, Julie Sprague and a uh, plan that we would like you to consider this evening. Uh, the uh, essential theory of our plan is we are creating a new house of, of good construction for four seasons. Uh, it is a, a home that is planned uh, toward the, uh, uh, toward uh, one's uh, senior years and that is uh, on a single level as a complete living unit. And it is a parity in terms of its um, uh, square footage with the existing building. They're within 10 feet of each other as it turned out. So that uh, what we're doing by shifting the building uh, from where it is, is we're trying to, of course, maximize views, uh, deal with wind, uh, uh, work with the light, but we are trying to, to the extent uh, that seems practical in balancing the site, to move uh, to an area that we can improve its non-conformancy, but we cannot uh, seem to be able to comply completely with the 75-foot um, uh, setback. The site, as you can see, this is the site in context here of, of the overall property. And this piece that you can follow this in your, in your documents, but this piece that's it, black is the area of the new house that we're proposing. And you can see it's a more compact plan than the existing one. The existing one is over 90 feet long, as it turns out, and this, what we're proposing is 68 feet. It allows us to um, pivot the building back away from, there is a particularly um, difficult connection right here, and I can show you this here, is that the house is right on this particular inlet, this little chasm that comes up in there. It's, it sits right on the edge. And we pivoted it away from that and pulled it back from that. The second part of it is, is that as you look at this, this is the point on which we're pivoting, and the house will pull away. And if you look at this photograph, you see that the house pulls well back. So while points of the house are not in compliance, the, the, the the thrust of the building is to move it back from uh, the edge of the water without losing what The envelope left by the 75 foot setbacks is a pretty impossible envelope to deal with to create uh, um, a, a simple house that's, that can be built uh, within reason and uh, accommodates the single floor plan. So um, this was our solution to try to find a middle ground in that to satisfy all of those criteria and to also recognize the zoning setback, but as you can see in the plan, this, this is a, an L shape and it's quite narrow in many places, so that you, it's very difficult, you'd have to have a highly articulated building to try and uh, accommodate that, and as, the, as you do, it moves toward the road, so we try to get a balance between the setback and, and the road. The existing building is in fragile condition, uh, it was never built as a as a real building, so to speak. It was always built as a cottage. It has really no foundations. We're proposing a, uh, an insulated and ventilated crawl space. We are not proposing to dig a basement here, so that the, uh, in terms of the excavation part of it, uh, we're on, uh, and we think we're on very good ledge there, so that there is not a tremendous amount of excavation. It is a simple rectangle. The bay windows that you see in the plan are, are done by cantilevering, so we don't have uh, great amounts of excavation that we're involved in. It creates a building that uh, takes advantage, as I said, of the site of the views. We've created a grass courtyard uh, on the Lewis side, on the southwest side, so that outside spaces can be used uh, into uh, the uh, early or mid-fall and uh, used earlier in the season, so that the, the prevailing bad winds coming this way will hit the house, but you'll have the sun in the afternoon there, so that the shapes of the house are not arbitrary from, from that point of view. Um, it's interesting in that um, there has been 
It's a single story expression of the house. There are two guest bedrooms that are in the attic, so to speak, and they have dormers for their views. So we didn't go to a second story building. The existing building is about 20 feet tall, depending on where you take it from, but by and large, 20 feet tall. This building will be 22 feet tall, save for the one architectural feature that we have included in it, which is this lookout tower. The lookout tower is six inches below your limit, which is 35 feet, and it's at 34 foot six. But it is a 12 by 12 piece. It's not a huge part of it. And you might even call it an appurtenance, but it is the one sort of illogical piece that we <coughs> included. But connected to the garage, it does an interesting thing. It provides a privacy screen to the house. There is a dichotomy in that when one is in a house that's made of glass, you feel very exposed and especially to the public side. And what we tried to accomplish by placing the garage where we did and connecting it over to this lookout tower, which also serves as storage for uh, sports goods and that sort of thing. Um, what we tried to do was to create a, a forecourt so that uh, Julie, who lives there by herself, can hear people coming and that people aren't immediately coming up to the house. And this was an important part of it. If you look at the plan, you'll notice there's only two doors to the exterior. This is all part of a security plan. So instead of having rows and rows of French doors, we've got real leaf doors with proper deadbolts and that sort of thing on it. And it is a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, an important part of the design. It's pretty lonesome out there. It can be pretty spiritual out there, but it's pretty lonesome out there. So we wanted to have some buffer where there's, there's really land, uh, the forecourt as you come in that is uh, sort of semi-private property and then you get into the private part of the house. So that contributed to the forms as well. The, uh, we have tables uh, with all the square footages and that sort of thing, but you notice as you go through it that the houses are essentially a parity. There's less volume in the house that we're, we're offering uh, because of, uh, of the use of the roof. Uh, we're using the volume in the roof where the existing house does and it stretches out. So we were able to reduce the volume by some 4,000 cubic feet. Uh, we are a little higher on the permeable surface. I do take exception to uh, pea stone and that sort of thing being considered uh, non-permeable, but nonetheless, that's what your rules are. So we have indicated legitimate pathways and a driveway to the garage. So we're, uh, we have, out of 131,000 square feet, we've increased the non-permeable area by 1,000 square feet. It's relatively negligible. We have moved pretty close to 50% of the building uh, out of the non-conformancy. Uh, if, if you take the square footages that are outside of the 75 square feet and you, the 75 foot setback, and you compare the two, you'll find that there's some 44% of, we've improved that condition by 44% is the, is the hard math on it. But uh, as I say, what we've tried to do is to create a balance here. We knew we needed an adjustment, and we wanted to come and, and of course, present that to you. Uh, but uh, we have, I think, we have proposed what we think is a, a modest uh, proposal to uh, to build a, a house that will serve uh, uh, Miss Sprague for years to come, and uh, it will be attractive on the site. We've used a lot of. Uh, architectural idioms that are very comfortable on this. And it is a low house. And if you come through the gate and you look, it's a plain, it's a, uh, it's a plateau. And we've tried to pick up the geometry of that, with the one exception where the tower is the foil, but it's a relatively small element. We're not building a large wall. So that's our scheme. And we would ask that you consider uh, how we have placed the building, how we have improved the nonconformity, even though we haven't satisfied it completely and that the house is an appropriate and, and uh, uh, an appropriate house and you would find in our favor. Uh, I'll entertain, obviously, any questions that you have. Oh, I should say that we have one less bedroom in this house than the existing house does. This is strictly a three bedroom, two and a half bath house. That's another improvement in terms of the, uh, the density of use. Thank you, Mr. Zarelli. What, which, is, which side is the front of the house? The roadside the or the, the ocean house, side? We call it the, the roadside. That's where it's, it, uh, that dimension that we have there is, is, we treated that as the front yard from the roadside. And then the rear yard is the water side. I know that's difficult. I always think of the rear yard as the, as the, as the uh, front, but that is the, uh, that is the rear of the house where the porch is located. Is it possible to configure 
the house that you designed with a 75-foot setback? We tried that property. Hard. We obviously didn't want to be here. Uh, and uh, uh, on advice of Mr. Smith, we tried to do that. The problem is we get a house that's aimed the wrong way. It's, it's vertical, and it's, we can't use the wind and the views and the, and the light as well as we can. Plus, there is an attachment to the current location. And so what we were trying to do was to, as I say, we were trying to build, first of all, it's a very simple house. If you look at it, it's, it's three rectangles. It's the tower, the garage, and the house itself. So we wanted a simple form. Uh, to answer your question, if we danced all over the place with it and we shifted and, and created prismatic shapes and that sort of thing, we, we might do it. It would come out looking like a group of townhouses. So we wanted a simple, calm form. But secondly, there is the attachment to that particular location. And thirdly, we wanted a house that we could afford to build. And so that's how we got there. But if you look at this piece, the only real building area is right in here. And you wind up with garages in the wrong, coming into the master bedroom as opposed to, to, to the central, to the kitchen. And it, it was a Rubik's Cube. And I tried very hard to, to uh, make that work. And I could not really make it work. If you ask me, can I include the square footage? in the area that is allowed, in that 75 square feet. I would say yes, but I could not come with a result that we, we have at this point in terms of all the factors that determine this, the shape of the home. Questions for Mr. Zarelli? Um, the, on this plan here, um, the setback is the red line. Yes, yes. Let me just point that out. This is the allowable building. Right. My question, the first question about this would be, I would expect this to be more or less parallel, you know, paralleling some kind of profile of shore, since it's a well, setback from the high water mark, right? Yes. So uh, why is that not more formal? Mr. Chair? Well, because they, you wind up overlapping. I mean, this is the way to really show it. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, probably want to share with everybody. That's also from our engineer. We didn't determine that setback. That was the, uh, there was a subdivision number. Yeah, maybe you should go to the microphone over there. Yeah. Um, Can you re-ask that in a way that the rest of us will be able to follow what you were asking, Mr. Zarelli? <laughs> uh, the question I asked was, um, I was confused or concerned that the drawn setback here does not parallel what I see as the coastline in the area where the setback is really a 75-foot setback from the high water mark. This drawing that we used as a base drawing was prepared as part of the subdivision plan by BH2M, which is this group, uh, which is Lester Berry's outfit. And uh, we took that to be what had been agreed upon as the, as the setbacks, and that's what we worked with. Bruce, could you maybe help me understand how that gets laid out? Well, the envelope you see on here is defined envelope uh, as part of the subdivision approval that was granted by the planning board. Uh, assume, assuming that the, 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 property, the front property line and the side, meaning towards the way from the ocean, are the setbacks for that particular district, and the other ones being, being the 75 foot from the high water mark. Okay. I, I didn't question uh, the defined building envelope that was already on the original subdivision okay. plan approved last year. And Mr. Keneally, we didn't either. We took it as but Is there a question that, that doesn't meet the 75 foot? No, I'm just trying to understand oh, okay. that it is a 75 foot, and you've someone, either you or the planning board, has confirmed that it's measured properly from the high water mark. Because we had this question come up in a, in a situation. I have been to the site. I haven't confirmed that that line is 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 necessarily the 75 foot setback. Okay. Typically, but that probably isn't relevant uh, to this application in that. The board's charged to require that they be pulled back to the greatest practical extent, and if it's less than 75 feet, so be it. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah. see what we have in front of us. That's all. We typically find these arcs. Yeah, when you take points and you plot the points back, right. what you find is they begin to overlap each other, uh -huh. uh, and it's particularly true when you have these kind of uh, this kind of uh, variegated uh, coastline. Sure. You take 75 in one direction. And then you bring in 75 from the other side, they begin to overlap, which right. is actually the problem that we face with this. So what the engineer chose to do was to create an arc and get an improved envelope out of it. And we've worked with it on that basis, sir. 
and you said this is the, this is the uh, setback that's been approved or defined by the planning board already? That's my understanding. Okay. Well, it was the it was the envelope shown on the subdivision plan. Okay. Now, whether anybody confirmed the high water mark setback okay. uh, or not uh, would be up to grabs. I, I, I believe any issuance of, of a permit uh, for somebody that wants to meet the 75 foot setback would be, I'd have to verify through an actual site visit. Uh, should, should the applicant come in and, and, and have the whole envelope, <coughs> the whole building located within the envelope shown on the subdivision plan, I'd still have, I'd probably have, I would have to verify that that 75 foot exists in order to issue a building permit. If, and, and if it was farther back, then they, they would have to come to you. So we would have a certified uh, site plan by a certified engineer uh, to confirm. We would have him place the building mm -hmm. uh, as a certified site plan with all the math worked out. And right. he, would, he would then be the responsible party for that. And the computer programs that we have today will confirm that. But, uh, and he will provide him with the data uh, uh, to confirm it. And we would use, uh, we would have him place the pieces in the, in the, in the field or actual dim dimension, mm -hmm. but uh, because it's a sensitive issue, and that's typically how we handle, particularly on waterfront, uh, we want to be, we're very careful with that. We have, my office has a fair amount of experience in working with these um, uh, coastal overlay zones or, or shoreline districts and that sort of thing, and, and it has to be very pristine. But our request tonight is uh, not for a building permit per se, it's a, um, it's a request for, um, a, 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 in a relief on the 75 foot to the extent that we've been able to uh, do this graphically. And mm -hmm. that's all we're asking for. We are a long way from a building, <coughs> but um, we've got, uh, we think, a good team and we'll be able to get, uh, get to that point. But the, um, as I say, this, this, the position of this building is a, is, a, is a balancing act that we thought would improve existing conditions and provide our client uh, with a uh, an affordable and and, and and a house that it responds to the to the uh, to the environmental factors out there, which are no spring out in that plateau. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to clarify what the process is going, how the process is going to play through here, because uh, it's a reconstruction situation. So, uh, and you are in fact apparently um, less in violation of the setback than the current house is. But if we if we end up Proving this on the basis that only a certain percentage of the house is beyond the setback, Neb, which it goes to you for a building permit, and do you have to do something to confirm that, in fact, this is the proper line for the setback, for the 75-foot yes. uh, mark from the high tide line? I'd have to verify that it's 37 feet from the high water mark. That's yeah. correct. I think my past experience tells me that if there is an issue with regard to that, the substance of it is a, an adjustment rather than uh, anything draconian. I mean, we, we, this is pretty well. I, I would assume that. I just wanted to try to get it out on yeah. the table. It is, it is clear that the shortest non-conforming distance uh, existing is eight feet because I have been to the site and I have verified that measure. Um, so that said, eight to the 37 um, right. wouldn't change. Because I do know that it's eight feet. I do know that one measurement um, from a prior visit, not with this architect, but another architect that had that had, was working on it a year ago. Other questions? <clears throat> Other questions for Mr. Zarelli? Last call. Mr. Chairman, if I could just summarize. But we have a house that, certainly. in terms of its volume, and it's somewhat improved in the volume, but essentially it's a house at parity. Uh, and we have improved uh, to the extent that the existing house is non-conforming. We have significantly in improved that uh, condition. Um, and uh, we ask uh, for your blessing. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Yes, sir. My name is George Brett, and I reside at 185 Charles E. Jordan Road with my wife, Deborah Lombard Brett. 
And uh, I don't know if you have a copy of this call to notice, but if you do, it helps to put in perspective where we live in relation to the property in question. Uh, we are what you might say the, the abutters, although it's a, a good Tiger Woods tree iron shot from where Dooley's house is to, uh, to ours, but nevertheless, we are the only butters per se. Uh, now, Julie has shown us the plans of this house, and we've examined them, and naturally we're thinking about, as we're to the west, that's back to the east. What is our view? And we find it very acceptable, and uh, the general architecture will be very pleasing, and we think it would be an admirable addition to the landscape. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brett. Any questions for Mr. Brett? Thank you, sir. Anyone else who wishes to speak? Mr. Green? My name is John Green. I'm the property manager of the Sprague Corporation. And I just went, want to offer the Sprague Corporation support with Julie's proposal. Um, after 19 years of managing the property, uh, I've come to know the site pretty well. Um, I would say the proposal uh, fits the site very well. Um, the uh, decrease of nonconformity uh, on the site would be very helpful. Uh, certainly would be much better than uh, reconstructing that structure uh, or renovating that structure that exists right on top of the rock there. So the Sprague Corporation uh, just wholeheartedly supports th this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Green? Anyone? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, no one, I assume, here is opposed to the application. Um, that will therefore close the public comment portion of the hearing. And I will open this to discussion among board members. And just uh, perhaps direct everybody to page 41 of the new ordinance for the relevant section of the ordinance. At the bottom of page 41, you'll find 19-4-4B2, relocation. which says the non-conforming structure may be relocated within the boundaries of a parcel on which the structure is located, provided that the site of the relocation conforms to all setback requirements to the greatest extent, greatest practical extent as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, it goes on to say, in no case may a structure be relocated as to increase its non-conformity of course, in this case, they are proposing to actually decrease the nonconformity. And then it goes on to say, in determining whether a relocation meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall consider the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, if any, and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. So that is our guidance. Comments? I don't think we've heard any evidence as to whether this meets the subsurface wasteland disposal rules. Um, is that something we turn to Bruce for? I think we rely on Bruce to make sure that that is satisfied as opposed to evidence being presented to us. Well, it's, it's my understanding that the system hasn't been designed, but there, are, there, are, there is a, a location that will be suitable for a three-bedroom replacement system on the site. And evidence That's forthcoming um, should they get their approval. And evidence of that has to be presented to you before the building permit is issued. That's correct. Okay. I, unfor unfortunately, your comments aren't being picked up by the microphones where you're sitting. Um, but we do understand that the septic system hasn't yet been designed. Uh, permits haven't been 
granted for it. No. Um, and it's understood that no building permit will issue until those Absolutely. permits are available. Absolutely. We stipulate to that. And, uh, but I did want to mm -hmm. say to the board that we tried very hard to get that information for you tonight. And, and uh, unless the ferry over at BH2M was working real hard to get a backhoe in there, it's imminent. But uh, we wouldn't obviously proceed without knowing that we were solid there. And, and again, we're not asking for a building permit tonight, simply uh, and, uh, a, uh, your comments on the, uh, on the proposal. But we understand. It's, it's not this board's authority to issue building permits. This is my first time dealing with this particular kind of application. One of the findings of fact is that we have to have it demonstrated to us that a new subsurface wastewater disposal system can be installed in compliance. I'm not sure what it, what that implies, Bruce, as far as what has to be demonstrated to us. Does the existence of a septic system already there demonstrate that satisfactorily as far as this criterion is concerned? Only, only if we knew what was in the ground. Now, when you completely replace a, sep a building like this, then, and, and especially in a shoreland zone, we do require that, uh, that, that provisions be made for a new system if if there's no record of what is, exists. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman, uh, we, had Mr. Israeli. we had anticipated this uh, question, and uh, we would also stipulate that where we know that, the, that this investigation is imminent, uh, we would, in terms of the timing, if we were successful with it this evening on the dimensional issues, we would, uh, we would simply say uh, abate filing it, uh, abate filing your your opinion until such time as we have provided uh, uh, Mr. Smith with the appropriate technical data. That's all. As that would be, uh, it's just, we just offer that as a logistical way of, of, of handling that responsibility if, it, if in fact it is um, uh, that big an issue. The standard says, though, if you look at the standard language, it's demonstrating that the present subsurface sewage disposal meets the requirements, or if you read on, a new system can be installed in compliance. Is it possible that we can word our, our opinion or our approval of this based on a contingency in that it's, we will grant this contingent upon um, a system being in, com installed in compliance with the rules? Well, Bruce, it's my understanding that no building permit can issue until there has been submitted to you proof of the design of an appropriate septic system. Is that correct? That's correct. So that yes. In other words, our approval today doesn't grant them anything with regard to a septic system. That's correct. It, it would it would have been a better situation to have the subsurface wastewater disposal system available at this meeting, uh, so that the board would understand that that condition has been wholly met. Uh, but I believe the board can go ahead and allow um, an approval contingent upon a design that will work for three bedrooms, uh, because. That, that it, say, it simply safeguards itself. Um, without the septic system design, no permit will issue anyways. And you said earlier that a building permit would not be issued unless the existing system uh, drawings exist for it to qualify. Yeah, well, nobody knows what's in the ground right. up there. That's, no, that, that's um, a true statement. We, it's our intention to provide a, a uh, system that satisfies the latest requirements. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, uh, on one of our site plans, you'll see that we were we show it located 100 feet back, which is one of the requirements part. So that's the area that we're going to focus our. We're not going to dig up the whole site, mm -hmm. but um, the only thing that the uh, that the uh, existing system tells us is that at, in some set of rules that were issued at the time when that was done some years ago, um, it worked. We do. We have always in this kind of work abandoned existing systems and built the latest. In Massachusetts, we have Title V, which is going on us. But uh, you want the, this investment, this level of investment wants that to work well. And we would not proceed unless we could make it work well. But the, the building official and the building permit process 
is, uh, is secures whatever contingency that you put on it. But what we would try to do for you is, is to uh, put into Mr. Smith's hands as quickly as we can. Um, and it's been, con I have the letter indicating that we have contracted for this and, um, you know, the price and, and all of that. So they're working hard to get that done for us. We tried very hard to have that tonight at, at uh, Mr. Smith's urging, and we, we just couldn't get the equipment there. It's an anomaly for us to deal with uh, zoning issues and health department issues at the same time, and, and we got caught napping on that. We, it just didn't um, compute with us because we, we don't face that as, a, as an intersection of approvals. But since it is here, um, any way that you would get a word that, if in fact we are successful, then, then we, would take, we would stipulate to it. Thank you. Where, where well, the, uh, go ahead. Where is the current uh, septic field? Uh, there is no documentation, uh, and we don't know. We know that there is a uh, there is a, uh, uh, a house drain that comes out of the house that's visible. Um, so on one of the uh, and, uh, maps we have, it actually shows the septic system, doesn't it, on the ocean side of the house? Uh, we have not seen that. If you have that, you have a map I don't have. Um, I thought that was... That's what the pipe would indicate, and what we're saying is, as part and parcel of this, we're going to move it up uh, 100 feet off, of the, uh, off the bank. But there is a pipe. So. You were not putting a foundation in because of the ledge. That's yeah. one of the reasons. Uh, we, as you move back, that further. Yeah. There's more fill. There's more earth as you move back. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. This is this is really wind whipped and uh, and uh, it's taken this uh, the uh, the surge on occasion. Uh -huh. I would guess over over time. And there's not as much topsoil there as there is further back up. And in fact, further back up, they're farming or they used to farm there. So we know that we've got uh, depth of soil up there, just empirically by looking at it. Okay. Um, and uh, we know that there are several systems on this property uh, that are operating today and operating just fine. So it's not a... Uh, Do you have to pump back up to the back end of the property? Uh, we'll see how far down we can dig. Our hope is that we don't. We like to do everything by gravity, and without the basement, we have an opportunity to be able uh, to do that. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, if we if we do that, we will have to do an ejection system that is uh, acceptable here, and that's usually uh, dual tanks and dual pumps that operate on, uh, you know, uh, alternately, mm -hmm. and has an alarm system on it and a, and a couple day capacity or, or, or however. But there are good systems on that. When we work on the waterfront a lot, um, even in urban areas, we wind up having to use ejection systems. We don't like to use them, obviously. We'd like to have gravity, but we don't know that. And that's what this digging will, will tell us what we need to do. First floor elevation is approximately 24 inches above the finished grade, so we've got a slope started already. And, uh, but that's, that's, uh, that's what we need to know. That's all part and parcel of the design. So you're telling us that based on the information available to you, as far as you know, that a subsurface wastewater system can be installed it, in It's compliance. a reasonable inference. Uh, obviously, if we can't find a way to do that, the project is abandoned. We can't proceed. Unless you can prevail upon the Sprague Corporation to put the system on land other than on the property of We would have Julie to explore Sprague. other options. You're absolutely correct, yes. Okay, other questions? Dr. Chapmas. On this map, uh, the yellow outlines are property line. Yes. And, and there are two of the yellow lines. Yes, and there's more property behind that. This uh, is a 30 foot you, easement, is that correct? This is an easement that constitutes the road. And, and so the red hatch line is the building envelope. That's the building envelope that was determined. Based on 25 foot setbacks from 
the easement and the right side property? Line? Yeah, the, the way that this is set up is that the, si the, the side lot that you see over here to the, to the east is a side lot line because there is, the shoreline doesn't affect it at that point. The rest of this line, this one that dips down and returns and comes back up is determined by the 75 foot which is in the shoreline district or the, or the coastal overlay. And then this line is the 20 foot setback on frontage. 25 on the- 25 on frontage, yeah. And the left and lower arcing or, or the 70. That's all relates to the variegated coastline. Do you have any uh, feel for the size of the building envelope, how many square footage or the square footage of the build, potential? building envelope. Yeah, the, the potential building envelope is 2,200 square feet. I can give you the exact numbers. I, let me, don't trust this old mind here. You mean within the, the, first, the first floor of the new house is uh, 1,531 square feet. And that's the, the footprint. That's the footprint of the house, plus a garage at 533, plus a porch at 386, and the tower base is at 144. It comes out to 2594 is the footprint. That, that wasn't exactly my question. The, the total lot size is 131,000 plus foot, feet, square feet. The building envelope that you show in red, you have a feel for the size of that in relation to the 131,000. I, I, it's very small, I, and I have not calculated that. Feeling for it, if, if, this, if that's a 2,000 foot, uh, I was going to say it's somewhere between six and 8,000 feet, maybe 10,000 feet at the outside. Okay. So I would have to say less than that given the arms, yeah. I'm does, just shooting. Does this entire lot fall within the secondary 250 foot setback of the shoreland performance overlay district? Uh, my the, manager the says yes. The entire lot falls in that. Bruce, does, do their do all of their proposals meet the secondary guidelines for the 250 foot setback in the shoreline performance over the lake district? The only, only guideline that has to be met other than building footprint um, would be a, a percent impervious surface coverage. Of, can't exceed 20% of that portion within 250 feet. And the whole lot is within 250 and he did, they do have an addendum that, that shows the the came yes. packets um, that calculates that 20 percent because the application was it's two they were a little bit confused on that on the application so they sent an addendum up it's a uh, 3.6 percent uh, permeable you should uh, for the proposal. have an addendum in your packet right, I, I saw that but there, there are no other requirements other than tree cutting percentage of tree cutting and I believe they indicated that they that's, were. That's correct. And we will replicate those pine trees that are disturbed. There's very few of them. It really is a plain, it's, it's quite uh, open. Would you mind stating again the, the reasons that the house could not be placed fully within the building? Just go over that one more time. Uh, the house is, uh, in order to uh, accommodate all of the things that determine the shape of a house out there were particularly sensitive to the environmental factors. And those environmental factors are the wind, the views, and the travel of the sun and the slope and the simplicity with which we, which we can approach the building so that it is a practical building to use, to use the word in the code. There is an additional criteria that's been added into this that gives us somewhat more footprint is that the, uh, the master bedroom and, and its associated bath and, and closets want to be on the, on the uh, first floor because of a retirement climate. This building is, uh, the main rectangle of this building is 18 feet wide by 68 feet long. So it's, a, it's essentially a, a ranch house and it has all the economies in it that it does. It achieves its architectural character from proportion and detail rather than from, in my profession, we call it, we don't, we're not using big A here, we're using little A. And, and uh, so when you add all of those factors in, the ability to use the building to block the wind, the ability to see from every room, uh, the ability to connect the garage to the house so that one, once one is in, they're protected from the elements and getting to the garage. And then the, the uh, unique criteria of trying to provide some sense 
at least psychologically, if not physically, a sense of separation and security where you have an opportunity to filter who's coming to the house and who isn't. Um, those factors led to a form. And as we moved that form about and breaking it up in different pieces and things, what we found was that to achieve all of that, we wound up, we wound up with relationships that were unsatisfactory or complex building forms, which to us were antithetical to what we were trying to achieve. So that's how we wound up where we are. It was, it's not arbitrary, it is a reasoned uh, thing. Some of the things that worked for us. Today, the current building is 98 feet long and it presents a block to the viewplane that's some 98 feet long and 20 feet tall. In this case, we are 68 feet and 22 feet tall. So that, and by cocking it at an angle, we open up some of the view corridors to the land behind it. Not a great issue when behind you is a, is a farmer's field, but on the other hand, the experience along the road and for people walking along the road and that sort of thing is enhanced because there's less of the view that's blocked. But all of those are factors that worked into creating the form of the building. And as I said, we tried to create a balance between the location of the road and the, location, and, and the requirements of the setback from the top of the bank. And this is where we came down. Other questions? None from Mr. LaPlante. Um, yeah, I do have a couple. Um, we've talked about the size of the lot, the slope of the land. I think you just mentioned it's pretty flat. Yeah, it's essentially, it has a gentle slope to it, but it, 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 there, is, there is no eccentric topography. You can see that there's very little ink. The way to tell when you look at a drawing is the more ink you see, the more topography there is. So there's very little ink there. And if anything, it goes down as you get closer to the water. So yeah, it, it, where it, it, and then it drops abruptly. It's, it's quite dramatic. So where the house is proposed to be located is probably the flat, one of the flattest areas. It is, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can see that in this. Uh, I, took, I used both of these pictures to figure because I showed some of the existing house, and then we pivoted the house back this way. Okay. And, and you can see it's quite gentle. It's very, it's very little uh, very little way that needs to be done to be able to start to blend it. Sure. You want to pass it down, let them all look? So the potential for soil erosion would be less because it's also getting back further yes. and it's flat. And we've also included uh, the, the flow patterns, the drainage patterns we made at the yard today, say for a thousand additional feet of the keystone. Okay. The, um, the other thing is that if, if there is a, another addendum that we provided in the packet that shows the precautions that we would take I saw that. with regard to these. With the building. These are standard. And you've talked about the fact that there aren't other structures or budding property, adjacent properties. It's just five open spaces. Okay. And we've talked about the septic system. Yes. And the impact on views on neighbors is, is non existent. If you are hiking, if you're walking, if you're out for a walk, this will improve the views to some extent because it's a shorter building in the, in the viewpoint. Okay. But isn't it a private road also? So that there's. But, but people can walk through. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's I agree with you, but it's not as burning a criteria, but nonetheless, it, it does improve those to some extent. And that's part of, of, of uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Spray Corporation is concerned with that sort of thing because that's their property. Okay. And from the picture you just showed me, it looks like you are not removing much ve vegetation. There's a couple of uh, 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 what I call black pines, those gnarled up pines mm -hmm. that, that, that are, uh, we used to call them uh, stunted pines. And uh, that's, that would be the extent of it. And, and we certainly will do landscaping so that we will replace, replace those. But we don't want to change 
the character of the, uh, of the site. I mean, it's the charm of the site. We're not in there to do a set piece. We're there to integrate into okay. what is the, the larger picture. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is the tower attached or detached? I'm sorry, sorry. The tower. The tower, yes. Is it? You show it as a separate item? It's yes, it is attached. If you, if you look at the uh, elevations of the building, it's attached and it forms a, an archway that, that you enter under between the garage and, and, the, um, and the, uh, uh, the tower. And the tower is used in two ways. The lower floor of the tower is used for storage of sports equipment, gardening stuff. It's a little garden shed type of thing. And then there's a, a metal staircase that takes you to a room. And we set the sill of the windows at the ridge of the of the house so that you could get a 360 degree view. And it's analogous to a, uh, a sailboat cockpit. It has uh, benches that are lazarettes where you can store cushions and blankets and all that. But it's an unheated and unfinished space. So it's a common roof that uh, encompasses the... Ties it together, yes. Yeah. Why do you show it as a separate structure? I uh, was showing the ground plane. Sorry? We were showing the ground plane. The cut was taken at the ground rather than at the roof height. It's shown in the detailed drawings. Uh, there is a roof plan that shows it all tied together. Let's see those photographs. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the photograph. Oh, yes. Thank you. considered to be the south side? Uh, it would be the south side. It's the water side, yes. Okay, that's exactly. where the, that's where the porch is, is the rear of the house. Yeah, if I could show you. Uh, this, is the, this is the front of the house. Which is right here. Yeah, and this is the roof that connects and is the tower. <coughs> and, uh, and then this is the, uh, the rear of the house. And that's the Could I be excused for a moment to get a glass of water, please? You may. Hey. Is there a water bottle? I'm ready. Um, Here's a cup. Hey. Some of this you'd like. I don't know. Oh, I saw it. Bill's at it every week. Here's the last. I think that's what Mike does. Thank you. Believe it or not. This is the side. Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Any other comments or questions for Mr. Zarelli, Mr. Green, Ms. Sprague, anyone else? Would anyone like to make a motion? Um, well, I'm not sure we need to make specific findings in this case. Um, would, um, well, would you like me to try my hand at a motion? Um, can I hear a motion from somebody to? Do you have your draft? Yeah, I can make a motion. you have your draft? Right. Ms. Miller. Follow. I make Correct. a motion to approve the application of Julie Sprague um, of the, um, for 7 Odyssey Way to construct, reconstruct and relocate the existing structure um, to 37 feet from the normal high water line of the Atlantic Ocean uh, as set forth in the architectural plans given. Um, can we add to that um, contingent upon contingent. the uh, applicant obtaining approval for a new subsurface wastewater disposal system uh, that can be installed in compliance with the state's subsurface 
wastewater disposal rules and Chapter 15, Article 2, Private Sewage Disposal Ordinance. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to also add on to that, if I may. May I offer a suggestion for an amendment that would say that if the the approval is also based on the actual structure being loaded, located substantially in conformance with the site plan as presented here tonight. So uh, we're not going to see any major moves away from that. Yeah, I don't mind doing I know the motion. I just, I, is it necessary? I mean, they have to, they have to prove that when they get the building permit. So I think that. Well, I think our inclination towards approval is based upon the fact that they're moving it away from the current location and is less of a violation of the setback than the current thing is. And the motion made by Ms. Miller does include a setback of 37 feet. That's and, one point. and you could just add the words as shown on, on plan submitted. Right. That, yeah, that's, I yeah. Kind of, yeah, okay. on the plan submitted. that's fine. Do you want me to reword that or do we, for the purposes of minutes, have what we need? You want to try your hand at, once again? again? I make a motion to approve the application of Julie Sprague located at 7 Odyssey Way to reconstruct and relocate the existing current, to relocate the existing structure, which is presently located eight feet from the normal high water line to 37 feet from the water, the high water line, um, as set forth in plans Submit. attached to the application we've reviewed tonight, um, and contingent upon the demonstration that a new subsurface waste water disposal system can be installed in compliance with the state subsurface waste water disposal rules and chapter 15 article 2 of the private sewage disposal ordinance thank you did that cover everything well done a second second I second uh, mr keneally uh, discussion on the motion hearing none all those in favor opposed none the application is approved by a vote of five in favor, uh, zero opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. They're beautiful plants. It'll be a nice house. They're well done. Thank you, Mr. Zarelli. Um, there are no other items of new business unless somebody has one to present at this time. Uh, next item on the agenda, communications. Do we have any? Just what I passed out tonight, an article uh, from the uh, town attorney, Michael Hill, um, basically talking about the non-conforming issue of a, of a footprint expansion um, within 75 feet, as long as it doesn't go closer to the, to the uh, high water mark than that latest case reinforces um, me. what the audience should mean. Um, okay, the board we'll determined earlier that, that, that a 30% expansion could only be upwards, and I think based on this latest court case that, that, that you probably would take a look at that. You might take a look at it differently should a case come before the board. Okay, so everybody is encouraged to read the opinion um, attached to Mr. Hill's letter, as well as Mr. Hill's letter itself, because the issue is undoubtedly one that will come before us at a later time. That with, I don't have any other communication. With nothing else on the agenda, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>